For thousands of years, the culture of ancient Egypt has been admired and coveted. Today, some of the greatest artifacts of Egyptian culture are found thousands of miles away from the land that created them. And that angers Dr. Zahi Hawass. What they mean to steal these artifacts, to put it in their museums, and they damage the value of the tomb, and they damage a store, and they damage a civilization. Dr. Hawass is the man in charge of Egypt's antiquities, and he's got a wish list of items he'd like to see come home. To look at the bust of Nefertiti and the zodiac that shows the sky at the Louvre and the statue of the architect of the Great Pyramid, Hem Yono, every piece that has been stolen from Egypt, it should come back. At the top of his list is the greatest prize, the Rosetta Stone. It was really my dream to see in a hole at the Cairo Museum, looking at the Rosetta Stone. It is the icon of our Egyptian identity. The Rosetta Stone, arguably the most important Egyptian artifact ever unearthed. This nearly one-ton rock is engraved with messages in ancient Greek and two hieroglyphic scripts. By comparing the Greek to the hieroglyphs, scholars were able to crack the hieroglyphic code and for the first time understand the meaning of the ancient Egyptian language. It's an object that's important to to all of humanity. It's important for all of us to have access to, to seeing uh, an object that's, that's as significant as the Rosetta Stone. And I think that's why we feel it's important for it to be, to be based here in the museum. Hannah Bolton is a spokeswoman for the British Museum, where the Rosetta Stone has been on display for the last two centuries. The Rosetta Stone came into the museum's collection historically when it was originally found by Napoleon and um, uh, when he took his archaeologists and invaded um, Egypt and they discovered the Rosetta Stone. And when the British beat Napoleon, they um, took the material that he had collected. So the British seized from the French what the French seized from the Egyptians. You're talking about material that's been in a museum collection, particularly in terms of the British Museum, often for two, over 200 years, 250 years. And therefore, it has a history within this collection. But the, the history of the object here has been about 200 years. The history of the object from where it came from is about how many thousands of years? Well, thousands of years, but thousands of years under the sand and buried. Right. So it isn't a quite, you're not talking about a situation where for 2,000 years, you know, people were able to go and see that object in, in Egypt. But I mean, now all that of this material is, is uncovered and excavated, and it's actually only at that point that you start to get this, this sort of issue of, of where it should be or where, where it should be on display, because that's when you've discovered it. No, I totally forgot. Gary Vicon, director of the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore, yeah. believes the question of ownership is complicated. The English and the French have contributed to what the Rosetta Stone is. The Rosetta, Rosetta Stone didn't come out of the ground with a neon sign on it saying, I'm important, by the way. It took work. It took knowledge. Uh, and that, I think, has to translate into some sense of, of at least metaphysical ownership. What if, just say if, you know, Egyptians had invaded Britain 200 years ago. <laughs> they had found stones, massive stones, and carted them back to Egypt. And there, Egyptian scholars discovered what they are, or what we now know as Stonehenge. Would Britain not be right in asking for their return? I think, again, we come back to this issue about ownership. And um, I think the 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 then trustees or the trustees that ended up being set up to run the, the Egyptian museum, if you like, would probably use the same argument that the trustees of the British Museum use here, which is that actually, you know, uh, that there is a, a, a need and there's a great benefit to having uh, a, a museum of world civilizations. Because you're able to compare and contrast, there's always new things you can learn. There's always new connections that you can make. I need one person to come and debate with me to tell me this sentence that you keep this monuments outside of Egypt, it has a value. The value of it is in Egypt, not in these museums. 
Dr. Hawass's passion may just soon pay off. He's asked the British Museum to allow the stone to be exhibited in Cairo for three months when Egypt's new Giza Museum opens in 2012. We lend many thousands of objects to many hundreds of museums um, every year um, and subject to uh, fitness to travel and conditions and conservation and so on, there isn't any reason why uh, aspects of the collection can't be sent on short-term loan to anywhere in the world. It will happen one day that these artifacts should be shown here uh, for uh, a short time, like three months, and it will happen. And perhaps this stone that once brought about such understanding centuries ago still has the power to unite people of two great cultures.